Hello traders, tomorrow is setting up to be an interesting day. Uh, we are going into the overnight session here with an RSI uh, flat 50% at the 48 range, so basically flat RSI going into the overnight session here. And uh, some things we're looking at here for tomorrow, if I zoom down here, uh, the red line represents our primary trend line. It's a long-term trend line. It's, uh, uh, we've been talking about it. And uh, what we're looking at for here, uh, this gray line right here, that represents uh, the developing R1 for tomorrow. Um, as our value area has built out at higher prices for today in a tighter range, R1 is now at 3508, and we talked about it in the room. Okay, today R1 was at 3505, and we couldn't get up there. So, but we were outside of value all day. So that is a bullish sign being outside of the prior day's value. Okay. And we held it at, above this. And on a weekly basis, this line represents weekly R2. So we're holding weekly R2 as of yesterday or as of today. We're above weekly R2. And uh, we might be potentially moving to 3508 tomorrow on any type of bullish, bullishness in the market. So we'll keep an eye on this and we'll see what happens here. Uh, ultimately, we have been eyeing this trend line as a touch to uh, <coughs> potentially short the markets. So, and we do have major headlines with Apple and Tesla doing their uh, stock splits Monday. So uh, we'll keep an eye on this going forward. Okay, uh, some other things we're looking at here. We have a 41 RSI for the NQs. A uh, potential pattern that we have setting up here. We closed the highs on this day. So we have a strong close at day highs, strong green candle. And today we went to the opposite. We came down a little bit uh, on it. And we didn't act necessarily the opposite, but we're doing a transition candle. Uh, what we going, got going on on the NQs here, and we potentially might be coming down to this. The green lines represent the uh, Andrews pitchfork for the August trend, and we, uh, we came up to the midline. And earlier today, uh, I was talking in a room, I thought we were going to be rallying right back up to here for a potential breakout into Friday. Well, they sold off near the highs there. I actually had Netflix running up here near these highs the calls, and I went ahead to my profit, which I'm glad I did because they rolled back over. Uh, but uh, definitely something to keep on watch on the NQs. Uh, there are some reasons to think there are going to be more sell-side action on the Qs than uh, potentially to the upside action. So uh, something that I will talk about here in a minute. Okay, on the Qs, the weekly R2 is way down here. So we're looking at 11,680. So almost uh, 250 points lower R2. So we are extended a lot further away on the NQs uh, away from our weekly R2. We were basically on the ESs, we're right on the R2. And so we are way extended on the uh, NASDAQ going into the end of the week. Uh, we do have a developing value, a widening value for next week because of the massive move up. But the uh, volume point of control is still down at the 11,785. So we'll have to have another day build out up here to get the uh, this to migrate higher uh, for the week. So uh, and we are in a neutral stance on our RSI. So it could go either way on on in regards to the RSI. Uh, as you can see, we've had a nice tight trend here uh, on this side. Uh, I thought we were breaking out to the top side earlier today and that failed so uh, definitely we got to keep a uh, watch and see here on the NQs it looks to me like we were going uh, a stronger potential to go to the downside than the upside tomorrow okay on the Russell we did have quite a bit of bearish flow today for some reason which I'm not quite uh, don't quite understand yet uh, some things going on here we are in value for the week uh, value has built out sideways for the week. Uh, uh, we we are outside of this um, Andrews pitchfork, but so far price isn't breaking down uh, to new lower lows. But we did have bearish flow today uh, on the Russell. 
And then if you go on a 15 minute chart, it doesn't take me too long to load this here. Uh, basically, uh, we are at, uh, because the markets were bullish today, uh, it looks like in the after hours we are uh, at today's R1 area, which will, R1 our, our will migrate up to 1574 tomorrow. And we are above the expected value for tomorrow right here right now in the overnight session uh as so it looks like we're showing a little bit of relative strength in the russell versus the flow the flow is negative so uh, basically breaking out of this pattern this is has been by the dip to get back into the pattern that that has been the scenario for uh, a lot of the stocks and stuff for the month of august and uh i'm not sure this indice can do that but we are up here at, at this has sold off in a responsive sale area for the Russell. Okay, I'm going to start with the VXX. Uh, we were up 30% today on the VXX. And from this most recent downtrend, I do have an Andrews picture drawn on that. And as you can see, uh, the pattern which I'm seeing, the latest pattern here, that was that high right there. Uh, it looks like the Andrews Pitchfork might potentially be pushing out and trying to make higher highs above this uh, trend line here. 2577, that's where it closed at. So it does suggest that there might be, the volume does suggest that there might be a reversal happening underway here in the VXX. In the after hours, they are, yeah, it's kind of, now it's kind of neutral. You can't really tell anything in the after hours something to keep on watch here okay the one that's concerning to me right here that is our VX10 this is the VIX for the NASDAQ we do have a higher high over prior highs uh, on the VXN see see what's happening right here so this is something definitely to watch out for uh, there might be continued selling pressure in the technology space Okay, early on today, we did see some put protection, put buying in the RVX. That's the volatility of the Russell. Uh, we, you know, we're all, we are in value and stuff on the Russell. But um, as you can see here uh, from that uh, most recent sell-off right here, we're getting a little bit of action here in the, in the uh, Russell, uh, the RVX. Uh, this is not really nearly as pronounced. I'd like to see a, a higher high close as well. And we didn't quite get that. So, but the cues are the ones that I have to be concerned about here because we are, we did get that higher close candle, like it's starting to trend something to the downside. Okay, I'm going to start with my Apple chart. So I started out here in uh, 2019, and this primary channel right here, and we're right here at the very top tip top of this channel on the Apple. And it looks like we are about ready to roll back over. We had lots of uh, put flow in the 500s and the 510s today on Apple going into the overnight session. Uh, right now, it looks like we do have a slight bid, up bid for Apple right here, right now. But this is something that does look very toppy considering how long this channel has held in the past. This We've only been here four days and uh, we've already had two red candles. So... Uh, definitely something to be concerned about uh we don't have m major sell volume yet but something to definitely keep on watch and i think the selling pressure has been holding off because of the stock split that's hitting the market uh soon and then another one that looks similar microsoft okay and how you sit there and you look at this and say how can microsoft look the same look at this that same time frame back from 2019 that trend starting back here now, if you zoom in on that same channel, look where Microsoft closed. Right smack dab on that channel, okay? And so basically, this is this is where price wants to stay, okay? Anything above or below, you know, long down here, short up here. That's This is really where Microsoft wants to be happy. We did have bullish call flow going into tomorrow on Microsoft, despite this channel so 
I do want to point that out. It's very risky to be taking long positions out above this channel in Microsoft, in my opinion. Okay, Tesla's also doing that stock split <clears throat> uh, Monday. But, uh, so I just want to do a little comparative analysis. Going back from that 2019 open and drawing, this one here is not nearly as clear, but if you did a channel based similar, similar time frame, and basically here's what we get. Uh, we get Tesla, uh, and I also have my Andrews pitchfork here. And basically we had sell pressure right here. So that's why I anchored my, anchored my Andrews pitchfork right there because of all that selling pressure. And we're outside of the, the Andrews pitchfork now. So this suggests to me tomorrow is going to be uh, uh, flat to negative throughout the day to get back inside of the Andrews pitchfork going into uh, the news. So uh, after hours, we're up to like 10 bucks or something like that. Uh, this what That's kind of what I'm looking for is a move back inside of the Andrews pitchfork here. And ultimately, uh, if we do the comparison similar to the Microsoft and Apple, uh, the true value should be more like uh, 2015 based on the similar trend pattern. Okay, and 2015. So, and we're at 2238, uh, 2238 right now. So, you know, over $200, 200 points above the similar trend. If you look compare to, you know, I don't know if you want to compare apples and oranges, but you know, this is something to think about. Cause think, think about it in the past. This trend right here. Uh, let me zoom. Okay, it was completely rejected. This pattern right here and then uh it got rejected down here and it tried to come back into this and it rejected that pattern as well so this is the first time in history since way back uh so well basically this trend started way back in 12 26 uh, 2018 and this is really the first time uh that trend has reasserted itself it's starting back in uh, August 18th. We just finally got back in that trend just uh, a couple weeks ago. And uh, see so this 27th, yeah. Less than two weeks ago, we finally got it back above this trend. So something definitely to keep on watch uh, going forward into tomorrow. Okay, Netflix, I traded today. I managed to scalp some calls on that one because the order flow was all bullish today. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. It's just if there was a nice little dip and I had time remaining, I wanted to buy the dips because I wasn't quite as bearish as a lot of people in the room, but uh, I probably should have been. But uh, as you zoom in, you see this nice little trend here. And we came in, we took some profits off, and look where it stopped. It closed right on the bottom of that trend. So uh, that's uh, something to definitely keep on watch. It's done that before. And then it's, you know, dojied out the next day. Then it comes crashing down. Uh, it's come crashing down before, only to see a really bullish day the next day. So this is going to be very interesting uh, what's going to happen uh, come uh, uh, tomorrow. And the volume, the sell-off volume was considerably lighter here, you know. So definitely something we're going to have to uh, uh, keep on watch here going forward uh, on Netflix. Okay, some things I'm looking at here on uh, Boeing. And we did have all that IWM put flow, so I definitely... Um, a lot of times you'll see Boeing and IWM, they're both COVID plays. And uh, uh, if you're seeing a lot of put flow on the IWM, you have to sit there and think uh, what's going on here with the uh, uh, Boeing. Uh, so some things I'm looking at here. This here was an inverted head and shoulders, which uh, seemed to have failed. Okay, so uh, it's it's not actually a automatic failure until we break uh, 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 we've until we break that neckline area. So basically, uh, if we get a candle below the one seventy one eighty nine, then that's going to be a break of the head and shoulders area. But here's what I was thinking: uh, this is the uptrend we've had since the earnings. You know, we had the initial down move from earnings. Then we had the up, this uptrend we've been in. 
And it looks like to me we are breaking out of the uptrend on Boeing. So uh, I know uh, John is talking about and Minaj was talking about to the bullish side on uh, Boeing. Uh, but basically we are a hair's breadth, 171.67. We get below that, then that's going to invalidate the inverted head and shoulders pattern in my opinion. And with us crossing out of this potential uptrend here, that could be a double negative for this stock. I did have the calls, and they didn't work out. I lost $50. So I just want to definitely keep this one on watch to the downside, in my opinion. Uh, I think this is a more bearish chart than a bullish chart. So uh, I'm contra contrary to uh, popular opinion on that one. Okay, I want to really talk about SMH here, something that I didn't see till after hours. And basically, uh, you see this long trend we've had. It's really, really long trend since March. And I got an Andrew's pitchfork on that. We zoom in real, real close here. Look at this. Touch, touch, and boom. Like this on high volume, above average volume on SMH. This could, I've said a long time, if we're going to get a sell off in the queues, it's going, has to be led by the semiconductors. This might be an initial that is a strong engulfing topping formation, uh, potential topping formation here for the semiconductors. Very strong, right into support on all on one day. So definitely something to watch. And then I also have here a secondary look here, trend line, trend line, touch. We came right down to that trend line right here. As you can see, we're migrating away from the, this here was the accelerated growth phase okay and uh we're moving into uh, a whole different uh momentum phase here of the semiconductors so and we are bouncing right off of critical support for the semiconductors so definitely something to keep in watch that we have we have trans via time and you know time and price we are transitioning into a different trading environment for the semiconductors, and it's very apparent with the uh, trading view uh, 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 website. So uh, definitely something uh, uh, to keep in mind going forward in your trading here. And so uh, John was talking about Nvidia calls. Uh, I was actually looking for Nvidia puts. So um, you know, this is the way I look at it. Uh, everybody's got their own way of looking at it right there. I see that blue line. See my blue line right here? We broke below the blue line on the video. Uh, it was not strong volume. So, But, yeah, this is definitely something I want to watch. We're below our VWAP on the daily. And uh, if we look on the five-minute here, you can see that it was all over the place. And then finally dropped out at the end of the day. So definitely something uh it's, it's a broken pattern in my opinion for nvidia so i uh, earnings are behind us you know there's a lot of profits to be taken off the table on nvidia i'm still thinking uh, the primary trading channel is right here this is where it likes to, to stay uh let me show you uh i'll go back out here on the daily maybe can't remember what that is uh no one hour one hour real quick here on that one. And as you can see, we were above the primary trend and after hours, we are coming right back in. So basically I'm actually seeing the video back to the uh, 496 or the 491 area tomorrow. That's that's what I'm thinking here for the video <clears throat> from what I'm seeing here on the charts. So um, just keep that in mind going forward here. I think that's where we're going. We're coming, we're crashing back down for the back test of this blue line on NVIDIA. And AMD, we saw put flow also in Micron. AMD, AMD seems to be the best of the breed, in my opinion. Um, but it's another one. Uh, uh, let's go out in the daily so you can see that channel that I got drawn here. You see that channel? Uh, I took this channel for way back from this trading zone right here. And we've been trading back up into it. Look where we're at right now. Zoom into it. Look what we did right here. You know, this is, boom, boom, a reversal formation. Three candle reversal, potential three candle reversal formation, topping formation right here. 
So definitely, uh, definitely something to watch here. Uh, we could hair's breadth from breaking down away from this uh, primary trading channel that I showed you. So uh, definitely something we want to keep on watch here going forward. Okay, that's all I'm going to talk about. Video's getting a little bit long here, but we're looking to the bearish side on the market. So, uh, and when you delve in, you can see a lot of reasons that the Qs uh, have, may have topped out here. Okay, thanks a lot, and I will see you trading tomorrow.